He says nuclear. Our nuclear fizzle. Not nuclear. If you can imagine the nuclear, radiological, and biological risk. He's supposed to be in this group here. It's a whole lot smarter than this group down here. And he shouldn't be saying nuclear. Our nuclear fizzle. This is vetted. All right, guys. Welcome to the vetted uh, podcast. We are here Monday morning. We're here to give you the latest UFO news. We are short one today. Uh, Amy is not going to be with us. She's not feeling well. So please, in the comments, put uh, be better, Amy. That'll make her feel better. Uh, and we're just having some technical difficulties. I can't get my regular mic and camera to work, but we're pushing through uh, just like a UFO. We're, we're just going to keep chugging along here. Um, so, yeah, we're here to bring you the latest news. Um, let's see. The new episode of Vetted dropped today, so please check that out. Um, it's basically picking up the second half of the Nick Pope interview, and I just do a deep dive on David Grush. Um, really some great stuff in there. And, yeah, it's about an hour's worth of just great content. So please check that out. Let us know. It's, it's blowing up right now on YouTube, so get in. Get in it while it's hot. First episode really did great y'all responding really well so thank you so much for um the continued support and for this podcast um, as well so thank you again every monday new episode so like comment subscribe let's get moving uh what stories do we have coming up uh let's see here got a david grush update you know some of the stuff that's in the vetted um episode i'm going to talk about and i'll put a clip of that uh as well um if you haven't checked it out and then uh, Reddit, some some crazy stuff happened on Reddit. I got to bring it this week that is absolutely insane. Joe Rogan tweeted about it. It got it went everywhere. It somehow got involved, um, and it was hilarious. So um, we'll we'll get to that in a second of what what that is. So and then Luis Elizondo has some big news coming out. So find out what that is. And um, David Fraber, the U.S. Air Force uh, Top Gun pilot from the Nimitz and the Tic Tac and all that, he uh, made quite a statement on the Merge podcast. We'll find out what that is uh, later on. Um, but otherwise, let's let's jump into this, Sebastian. Um, do you have a, a story for us, Sebastian? I'll let you jump off if you're ready. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. So there, there were some media reports uh, last week, um, and basically they were about these ongoing, I guess, uh, meetings um, or studies that are going on um, in Washington, D.C. right now. And someone called uh, Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick, who is a physicist, and he heads the Pentagon's all-domain anomaly resolution office called AERO. Um, he has been um, speaking there, and I mean, he made some quite, um, let's say, um, revealing uh, comments. Uh, he said that, um, and I'm quoting him now, unidentified metallic orb UFOs have been spotted all over the world, right? That he said to that um, uh, NASA first ever public hearing into the phenomenon. He describes then really clearly um, what the recent trends were on those UFOs, what they all had in common, I guess. And again, I'm going to quote. So I'm actually, there is um, a screenshot, which we are going to share here, an image, which is from his um, um, PowerPoint, right? So basically, um, from all the UAP reportings between 1996 and 2023, the typically reported UAP characteristics are um, that they are round. Um, that the size is around one to four meters. They're either white, silver, or translucent. Um, they are normally seen at an altitude of 10K to 30K feet. Uh, in terms of velocity, uh, normally they've been reported uh, be either being stationary or um, at speeds up to Mark II. Um, some of them are visible on a radar um, and some not. So, so what this means is um, they have gone into really a lot of detail to, to classify a report and um, note down these, these sightings um, in, a, um, uh, in a database. Um, he then reports um, uh, one, recent, uh, one recent sighting uh, to give an example. 
<clears throat> but interestingly enough, um, that had been uh, had been resolved in the meantime. So um, they didn't really, they didn't really, um, you know, they didn't go into a lot of details. But I'm going to share it with you. So there was one in the Western United States. Um, they were like uh, they were on a training mission, and they observed several equidistant UAPs. Um, um, and they were unable to intercept them, right? So they write, uh, three UAP objects observed apparently flying at high velocity. Observing craft pursued, pursued, but was unable to intercept. Analysis of object geospatial positioning conclude the objects were significantly farther from the observer than originally estimated, right? So they thought they were a lot closer, but there was some sort of optical illusion which meant they were like a lot farther than, than they thought they were. Um, apparent morpholo uh, morphology changes result of sensor autofocus. So this was part of their technology, which basically fooled them. So they analyzed um, uh, with the help of air traffic control data that the objects were most likely commercial aircraft transiting um, known flight uh, uh, path to and from major airports in the region. So this has been um, validated by Aero scientific uh, partners. So this just basically shows uh, how they work, right? So there is some, um, you know, there, there is some sighting that gets reported. And then they have basically a, a team of people who analyze that, try to resolve it. And like in this case, sometimes there is a resolution, um, but in, you know, many hundreds of cases, um, there is not. So he then further went into detail um, what they are, what they are going to do, and what they are planning to do in terms of um, um, technology. So they are, for example, planning to deploy dedicated sensors just to basically track um, UAPs, right? Because right now they are all using um, basically existing military defense sensors and equipment. They share that with the military, you know, which they use for all sorts of other things. But they want to basically now um, deploy a, a dedicated technology just really to, um, you know, to to track UAP activity. Um, uh, so they have, you know, um, I guess more flexibility how they position that technology and and what they do, uh, and what they do with it, right? Um, yeah, so um, I thought that was really interesting. And so obviously he was someone who is a physicist who was a bit. What's the right word? Maybe a bit dry, maybe a bit boring, right? Certainly not someone um, who wanted to show off, right? Certainly not someone who wanted to boast with something or wanted to brag, right? I mean, he was someone who was really like a scientist um, and he was completely switched on and totally focused on their task and took it incredibly serious. Yeah. So I thought it was very interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, Shankar Patrick is um, brought up a lot in the first episode of Vetted, right? Um, he's one of the, he's the head of the current UAP tax task force. And he's the only one of the heads of the UAP task force who has said that there is no evidence for exotic material because all the other ones, right? Luis Elizondo, Colm Kelleher and David Grush, the, the new whistleblower. But Shankar Patrick, interestingly enough, is the only one that says, no, we don't. Um, and he's the current one. So people are actually a little weary of him now. Um, you know, they're kind of like, is he really trying to find this? Is he being used by the government to like, um, kind of like the Warren report? you know for jfk right like right. just just give it give us something official so we can move on so what's you what's know? your take on it what's your take on it does he seem to be does it seem to be like that no i think he's legit and wants evidence and i mean why would you i don't i mean this is the biggest discovery of all time he's a scientist if this was true he'd be all over it uh. i think he just really wants to know i think he doesn't want to rob himself of the actual discovery, which is something I'm going into for the next episode of Edit, people uh, robbing themselves of the joy of of finding out if this is real or not. Because people I think jump to the conclusion, it's real, right? Yeah, 
I, th I think you're completely right. I mean, we also need to make a distinction, you know. I mean, Luis Alessandro is not a scientist, right? I mean, so for him, in a way, correct. It, it's easier correct. to say something, but as if as a scientist, you you know, you you say something um too quickly, or you made, you know, you, you come to conclusions too quickly, you can ruin your reputation, right? Because you're seen as a scientist. Um who is not as free as somebody else is not a scientist just to to make a comment here and there right so i think he is basically um that he is kind of um um you know um restricting himself to to very sort of little and objective information without making any assumptions or um i think it's only normal right yeah absolutely i, I do want to clarify though dr Col Colm Kelleher is a doctor as well. He is a scientist as well. So he was also head of the UAP and he does say we have that stuff. So oh, honestly, yeah. when you get into when you get into the UFO and UAP topic, honestly, being a doctor or a scientist doesn't mean anything. Like it, it literally, in my opinion, doesn't make it any more credible because I've seen scientists say the craziest stuff in this community, right? And some people who aren't scientists <laughs> say things that are more sane. So I, you know, I, I just, whatever. Uh, but yes, um, I, I personally have no problem with Arrow, Sean Kirkpatrick. I know people watching this right now are going to be typing in the comments that he's a government age. He's a shit. He's a this. He's a, they're going to be typing. Right? I can see it. Me and you are part of it. We're also shills going for this guy. But look, I just think he genuinely wants to know this. And I think, um, He's just wants actual proof. I, I really, truly uh, believe that. Um, he works with Avi Loeb, right? And our interview coming up with Avi Loeb, Avi goes into that, how he works with Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick. They've published papers together recently. And Sean Kirkpatrick is willing to go out on some ledges and say some things. And uh, there's a reason he's in charge of this, you know? So, yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of him. I, I have no problem with him. I think everybody's I different. People but some people are naturally more restrained than others. I mean, some people may go out, um, you know, more openly and sort of more risk and have a risky approach to to what they say. Right? I mean, I think it's also personality. Yeah, you know that yeah. personality as well. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, look, he's he's on the government side. He's not on the private side. Meaning, he's not out doing podcasts and this, so he's not out here to say all this salacious stuff and write stuff that'll get you, you know clickbaits and and that sort of stuff right he's he's doing investigations he's doing um what he needs to do and there, there is i do want to clarify there's this myth going around that he doesn't have the clearance level to look into this stuff therefore arrow and sean kirkpatrick is just a waste of time that is incorrect he he does have full authority he can be read into the highest stuff there is nothing that him and his office can't be read into and learn about. So I do want to bust that myth because that, that people are using that to sort of uh, discredit Sean and uh, the office of Arrow. Uh, but they have the highest levels of clearance to go get um, any information um, that they need to. So, yeah, I do want to clarify that. So, yeah, I mean, look, we asked for this. People in the UFO community asked to study UFOs. The government creates a thing and like, we don't trust it. Well, what do you, what do you want? What, what, yeah, yeah, what yeah, you know, it's like, and then the evidence they present, they go, I don't believe it. Well, again, what do you want? What are you, what are you waiting for? I don't know. Again, people are robbing themselves of the joy of finding out for real if this is true or not, because they're already believing it. it's true. And if anything that doesn't meet that, I'm just going to ignore it. You just, you're robbing yourself of the joy of actually finding out. Uh, when it when it happens, you know, it's like I don't know, I don't know how to just I don't know what something else is like that, um, you know, just celebrating before the win, basically, like the the race car driver who's celebrating first before he ever crosses the finish line. Um, not a good idea. Usually, those people lose, right? In the end, they crash. He took one hand off the wheel. Anyway, uh, look, let's let's move into this uh, next story, um, Sebastian, because there is something that's. Aside from David Grosh, there's something that hit Reddit this past week, and not just Reddit, Twitter, UFO community, Joe Rogan tweeted about it. Like I said, it went huge. Everybody's talking about it in UFOs. And it's this particular post on Reddit. I'll put a link. It's, it's since been, the account has since been deleted, but you can still see the post 
and everything about it. I am going to be diving deeper into it for uh, vetted for the for the show, but it basically is a mo molecular biologist. This guy claims to be a molecular, he or she actually, I should say, claims to be a molecular biologist and that they worked on aliens. And then they go into this, Sebastian, I'm telling you, it's this like super technical, you know, like a doctor wrote, like a real molecular biologist wrote this thing, right? And um, it it just blew up. It blew up on Reddit. Everyone's like, oh my God, this is happening, you know? David Grush, this guy, right? Like all these things are happening. Um, but there's, there was some rumblings like, okay, this is fake. This was posted before online. This guy's doing this again, you know, whatever. So I actually posted something like that on Reddit and it did not go well, let's say. Um, Hundreds of comments, hundreds of people telling me that uh, I was wrong. And um, and to be fair, I did post a wrong link. And that's what screwed things up. Um, so for everyone watching, yes, I'm that guy. I'm sorry. I did that. Uh, <laughs> made up for it. Yeah, I had to apologize <laughs> to hundreds of people. It was crazy. I spent hours and hours trying to make up for this stupid link that I put and it was the wrong link. I just put this wrong link and it just spread like wildfire. Uh, but anyway, people, people believe this guy and, and anyone who doesn't say this guy's real, you're, they hate you. And that's basically what happened to me. Like I was just questioning, you know, I have a friend who's a molecular biologist. So I reached out to him to see if he'll come on and do an interview with me and talk about this stuff and see how real it is. How, Did he read it? Did he read that is. thing? He hasn't gotten back to me yet. He could think it's a little crazy because it sounds crazy. It, it when you read it, it's it's fucking nuts. It's <laughs> it's so outlandish. It's so crazy. You know, working on it just described the aliens in in extreme detail. Their bodies, their even their religion, their philosophies, like, <laughs> and people are dead set on believing this. You know that, that this guy is real. This stuff is real. Again, no. It doesn't proof, say he has been right? jacked off by them like that other guy. Yeah. <laughs> My God, gave me an erection. Yeah, that guy. Uh, yeah, I put that in the new vetted uh, episode. Um, yeah, this is where people have a problem that are trying to come to this community. They hear stories like that and they go, come on. How am I supposed to believe this? You know, um, it becomes very hard to sort of latch on and, and jump in because if you I mean, accept you're right. one, I mean, but, but you're right. You with accept before, the right? Yeah, in, in any other field. I mean, if you, if you came up with a story like this, I mean, I mean, let, let's assume you came up with a story like this um, being a normal medicine, right. Um, or being like just the do normal doctor. Right. I mean, and you came up with it like a sensationalist story like this. I mean, if, if you wouldn't prove pr being able to provide evidence, nobody would believe you right i mean so i mean it, i think it's good to be critical i'm not saying the statement isn't true right i mean but to have a critical um, response to it is normal right because otherwise you've been taken for a ride and you know you believe everything right so to be yeah. like to be like yeah. cautious i think is completely normal right and it, it's a bit i think it's a bit sad that in this move when everybody starts to slag you off only because you apply common sense and be a, you know, be a bit critical you know i mean it doesn't say it's not true right it just means you know, you want to see my evidence. Exactly. Uh, that's all people ask for. Um, immediately, people jump down your throat and just say, people are going to do it watching this. You know, no, if you if you basically don't just believe people, you know, without proof or evidence. That's what they want you to do. Just believe this guy said it. Believe it. Why are you denying or oh, you work for the government? Why are you disinformation? Why are you, why are you so skeptical? Why don't you do it? Why? Do, it's like. Wait a second. The burden of proof is on me. I have to provide that guy said the claim. Why do I have to provide proof that what he's saying is true? Like the logic makes no sense uh, because people want to believe this so bad. So they're willing yeah, to yeah, no, I agree. That's their it, own man. logic, their own. Right. Um, and again, if you don't believe it, they just think, you're, well, you're not coming from a 
uh, a good, you know, fair place. You're not, you're not talking about this fairly. And, you know, this is great. We're talking about this because in the new episode of Bennett, guys, go check it out right now. It's on our YouTube channel. I talk about this with Nick Pope, skeptics for verse believers. Nick gives me some great advice. And to y'all listening and watching, you know, what can both sides do to, to better this? What can skeptics do, right? And what can believers do to sort of help improve the conversation and, and how we go about this stuff? Um, because it, it, we can't move forward if we're not allowed each other a little, um, you know, to, to think about this stuff. I mean, we can't just believe it all the way and we can't not believe it all the way. There, there's got to be something, you know, right, right in the middle. Uh, so, yeah. Now, what, what, I, what, what I personally always find difficult is because this guy, if you read his post, it's, it's really interesting. He said, well, they have DNA and it's actually DNA, like, like our DNA and all these sort of things, right? And, oh, did you find it? You find yeah, I know you shared the link. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, yeah. I mean, I think yeah, yeah, I always yeah. find that difficult to imagine because, oh, yeah. you know, why, why would that be? I mean, why would evolution happen the same, the, exactly the same way twice, right? I mean, surely you would think that if there was another evolutionary process, it would be completely different. Maybe we wouldn't have even have the senses to see them, smell them, or hear them, right? Maybe they would be a spirit being, or who knows what, right? I mean, made of uh, made of something that matter that we wouldn't be able to touch or uh, anything, right? So why would they have eyes, you know? Why would they look like, have a head, have legs, you know? <laughs> why would they not be some, you know, some liquid mass or something like this, right? So that I always find a bit difficult because I mean, as you already said, I mean, I think that people wish for them to be like almost like humans, right? I mean, like or have something human about them at least, right? So some something that is familiar in a sense, right? That they can understand, right? But I think if, if there yeah. would be aliens, it would be something um, you know, completely different, right? I mean, completely different than what we that we can probably not even grasp, you know. I mean, absolutely. Um yeah, you know, in the first episode of Vetted, we talk about that with Nick. Um, and basically, we humanize them, right? We give them human yeah. characteristics. We give them human intent, feelings, emotions. Why would aliens do that? Why would aliens do that? We, we like, well, they would do what we would do. Why would they do that? Why wouldn't they do the logic, too? Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's beyond insane. At the end of the day, nobody nobody has more information like we're all have the same now again it there are people saying no 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 they're secrets i don't sorry without proof or evidence i don't believe anybody or anything about anything because if we're just supposed to believe people because they come out and they're nice incredible then we should just believe them then we're in for a long journey of just Right. How far could we get as humanity if that was our goal? Well, he's nice, so let's believe him. Like, I mean, I just is 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 um, is just insane. How about the you know hundred people who worked with David Grush who don't believe this stuff? Right. That's what well, that's I find. But like, this is what I find like um, Avi Loeb is doing so interesting, right? Because the, exactly the stuff that he found is completely different right i mean it's unexplainable Correct. these things these little um you know i mean he's I, got I, something you know he can yeah. show you something i found yeah. this thing you know yeah but it's like no, something agree. that is not um that's not explainable what it what it even is i mean it's just some sort of you yeah. know things we, we realize some some matter that is not from this um you know that that is not from this universe you know from uh or, or not from the solar system rather some you know some um but as I said, it's something that we can't explain. We have never seen. Um, so that that's that's right. credible to me, right? That would be, um, you know, that that would make right. sense. But I mean, um, so I think if those if and then I think that's the problem with that with that account, right? That this this person uh, you know has written down there on Reddit that um, it might be just one of those things that over familiarize everything. Oh yeah, I mean, look, there's quite a few red flags to this thing. Like, and again, we're going to dive deeper into this on vetted. I'm going to get, you know, a scientist. We're going to take a look at it, pick it apart. Is this thing actually seem legit? I'm not a scientist or a doctor and it threw up red flags for me. So I would imagine someone who's a scientist or doctor is going to see things. To me, it seemed like it was written by multiple people. It just, the, the, there was just, it just seemed weird. 
the way it was all but written. I, but but know, I, I do like tell you what I, I do tell you something. I mean, I do tell you something. I mean, what what I can imagine now. I'm you know that's completely going off a tangent now. What I can imagine is that there are like creatures on this planet, right, that we haven't discovered yet, right. So um, sure. whatever they would be, I mean, sure. like um, apes or some other things, like almost human like. So um so you know it, it might be and that, that this is a possible explanation right that they are from the solar system but just been for, for one reason or another not yet been discovered even though that sounds very unlikely but um that i could that i could see as something possible you know um it's like people um never thought there would be a black swan until they went to australia and actually saw there were black swans right so uh so you know that that is likely to be, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure if there are any undiscovered sort of locations on this earth, but potentially they are, right? If we haven't found them yet. So that could be an explanation. Yeah, no, uh, and that's called uh, our ultra terrestrials. Um, again, thank you for bringing that up. That's in the new episode of Vetted as well. Uh, Nick Pump and I speak about that. We go over the four main theories of the alien origin of what you know, these things could be, and that's uh, one of them, you know, they've been on earth this whole time before us even, which is why they look like us, right? Yeah. Which is why they look like us. They are us. So they're part of the, of our evolution somehow, right? I mean, Correct. it's just a bunch that, that went off exactly. somewhere. You know? yeah. Part of our soup, part of our primordial soup, right? So exactly. Um, or whatever, you know, we were, they created us, right? That's a big theory too. Um, that, that, you know, panspermia came with us either here or was brought over or whatever. Um, uh, but yes, um, look, at the end of the day, all possibilities are open until we know for sure. I mean, that that is true, right? Uh, look, uh, the, the David Grush stuff, besides from this big Reddit post, which I think is, I don't know how far that's going to go. Um, again, everyone's jumping on it to see what what's going on with this, so um we'll, we'll find out more about that with the reddit we'll put a link um down here in this description so go check it out read it tell us what you think and we'll do we'll, we'll just keep updating um for sure um but look, did you david hear, grush did you, did you hear oh, what, sorry. Uh, what, what leslie keen uh what leslie keen said about david grush you know that journal yeah, know she, lot, she said lot, that she would um, she said like last week on tv she said that um you know, um, she she thinks that a lot of other whistleblowers will come forward, but right now some of them are scared about losing their jobs, reputation, safety, security clearance, and all these sort of things, right? So I think really if the Pentagon wants people to come out, they need to reassure everyone that, you know, that's not gonna happen. They don't have to be, they don't have to worry about their status. Yes, I talk about that in the vetted episode um, that's out with Leslie Kane. I bring up all of that. So watch that episode. See what Leslie and um, Ross Coltart have to say about David Grush and updates, Congress. Everything's in this new video. So there's a whole David Grush update on there. Go check it out. Again, we'll put a link down. Go check out that video. It's got everything, you know, about that. Um, yeah, Le Leslie Kane is um, a big part of this story in more ways than we know, um, for for sure. So, but the the biggest thing about David Grush right now, that again, there's more updates and stuff. Go go check out that episode. But the biggest thing to know right now is that he is testifying at the end of this month. Okay, that's the big news. And July twentieth is the date I'm hearing. Okay. I, I don't know if that's exactly the date, but definitely at the end of this month. So somewhere around that date. So 10 days from now, July 20th is supposedly when he's testifying. And if not the 20th, somewhere around that before the end of this month. So, and I heard Luis Elizondo is testifying. I heard it's all happening at the end of this month. The big people we've been waiting for are finally going to testify in an open hearing. And that is happening. Sen Senator Gillibrand said that um, it'll be up to David Grubb if he wants cameras in the, you know, in the hearing or not. So we've got confirmation that there's a lot of people testifying at the end of the month, David Grush being one of them. He'll get to decide if there's cameras and we're going to get to the bottom of this. 
of what's what do you think of it? Will, 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 will there be cameras on us? Well, here's the thing. He's if he's being asked to talk about classified, how can he? How, how can we? How can we? You know, broadcast right. that to the world. Um, so I think there may be two hearings, or if he does it publicly with cameras, then there will be nothing said in there that we haven't heard in the news nation. In there, right? It'll be pointless to me. It'll just be for show. And I don't want this to be for show, right? If if they make a spectacle out of it, I think that's going to disappoint a lot of people. I think what people want to know is, is, is he really, where's the evidence he's showing? What is he telling people? Like, is he, if he's so convinced that this is real based on the information that he's seen, how come other people who see the same information are not having the same conclusion? That worries me, right? If he, if he's, he even says, oh, excuse me, not to bring up Sean Kirkpatrick again, but he says in the News Nation interview, and again, I go over this in the vetted uh, episode. He says, I gave the information to Sean Kirkpatrick, you know, so basic, and he didn't come to that conclusion. What is that? Why, what is about David Grush makes him believe this? Uh, you know, so I don't know. We'll see. Uh, we'll see. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. curious. You know, it, it is interesting. Um, you know, tell me in the comments, guys, if you're watching, listening, if you know any information about that. Um, yeah, I just find all of that fascinating. Um, I, I think it does kind of, he kind of comes across as like bitter, uh, David Grush a little bit right. about Sean Kirkpatrick. He comes across oh, a little okay. bit of like, why isn't he, why isn't he coming to the same conclusion as me? You know, hello, Th this pretty, pretty easily to, to, you know, and he's like wondering why is he not? coming to that conclusion um which makes me wonder well you know what exactly that's something we want to know what, what is it what have you seen that makes you think this like we want to see that stuff um look supposedly people are, are waiting to see like you said waiting to like leslie said as well waiting to see what happens with david grush and if how he's taken and if they like it then they'll come out too Right. So he's sort of the first one, but I don't buy that either. I, I'm, I don't know. I'm getting sick of talking here in a few things. One is I'll, I'm going to wait and see what happens. And then maybe I'll come out and tell my story Two, I know stuff that's top secret and classified, but I can't tell you. Um, I heard it from a guy who heard it from a guy. Right. It's like, I'm tired of hearing that stuff. If you know stuff you can't say, then don't tell me, you know, stuff that you can't say. I'm just, I'm really, that's the end of it for me. I, I, if one more person just says, well, I know a lot of stuff, secret stuff, I can't tell you. That. Okay. Then why did you even tell, why did you tell me you can't tell me? What, how stupid is that? Um, and that's where we're at. And, and I don't know. It's a sort of a grift, I think, Sebastian, with, with all yeah, this. Yeah, I mean, that uh, has been this, this, so, this uh, way since for decades now, right? I mean, it's just sort yeah. of. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's frustrating. And, and then I get it for people that are in this. They, they get frustrated. Um, they want to believe. You know why? Because they have their own experience. They have their own story, right? It's like, you, you can tell me whatever you want, but I know what happened on my front porch in 1987 with my wife drinking a tea. I know what I saw in the sky that night. You know, it's like, how do you take that away from somebody, right? You can show them this other stuff. This UFO video is fake. This guy's lying. Yeah, but what about my story? What about what happened to me? And I, you know, what do you do with that? What do you, what do you do with someone's experience like that? You know? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's uh, agree. right. It's uh, it's interesting for sure. Um, okay, so what, what's up next? Um, oh, Luis Elizondo. Apparently, the, the big news that he has coming out: another barrage of crap shot at Lou Elizondo. Uh, letters that are leaked out of the uh, out of the Pentagon that take another shot and try to question: Was ATIP real? Did ATIP study UFOs? Did Lou Elizondo have anything to do with it? People raising those questions all over again, trying to muddy the waters on Lou, who's you know by this point you can't take back what they've already said. Yes, it was real. Yes, he controlled. He was in control of it, and it was legitimate. And now they try to undercut him again because they know he's getting ready to drop some bombs. Yeah, yeah. 
I think it's that he's testifying. That, that's what I think is is happening. That he's testifying, and I think that basically this top secret thing that I found out about last summer about Luis Elizondo. I think this has something to do with it. Finally, so right. it was supposed to be a few months, but I think it's taken a full year uh, because. He, he put out a tweet saying, like, I'll see you in D.C. at the end of the month, right, to some other guy on Twitter that I follow. So that led a lot of people to think, oh, OK, he's coming to D.C. He's testifying this, that because people were putting that and he wasn't denying it. Um, and that's kind of his way of saying, yeah, I'm, I'm doing that. So th- this could be it again. This could be the big thing where. That people are waiting for, um, you know, with this, so. You, well, but do you, I mean, do you, do you think is, that we'll find out soon? Do, do you think that he will make any um, sort of um, new revelations other than the ones he made already in in detail? That's a great question. Um, it's either he's going to clarify the stuff he has said across multiple podcasts and bring it all to one place, if that makes sense. Um, sort of all the breadcrumbs he's dropped bring them all to one place and like officially tell the stuff or like you said, bring something new. Um, that would surprise me just because something new in this community doesn't exist. Even the stuff that David Grush came out and said, that's all been said before. Yeah, the yeah, stuff yeah. in this Reddit, right, right. right? The stuff in this Reddit thread, that's all been said before. Like there's, it's hard to get new information. How much more new can we get than, We have crash UFOs. They look like this. We have dead aliens. We have, where else do we go from there? There, there is no other story to tell, you know, it's like, we've already, we, we've already gone to the end of the earth with this. Like there, there is no, now what we need to do is, is find out if the stories are true. We need to stop telling stories and start verifying stories. That, that's what we need to do. Uh, yeah, because, no, yeah, you're right. You're right. right? Yeah. I agree. Yeah. So, yeah, um, I'll put a link to uh, this clip on Weaponize where George Knapp talks about that, that Lou's got, you know, some big bombs that he's going to be dropping. So, I, again, um, that, that's probably it. Um, uh, another story um, is David Fravor, the U.S. Air Force pilot. Um, excuse me. He went on the Merge podcast, um, which I've talked about before. Check out that podcast. We put a link down. And that's hosted by Ryan Graves, also pilot. But David Fravor is famously known as the Top Gun pilot who witnessed the Tic Tac video, uh, what, the main pilot who, who did that. Uh, he's on 60 Minutes. You know, he went all over doing the news. Um, so he's saying that there's a new uh, documentary coming out this year that he's been working on with several other people, Luis Elizondo uh, included, your normal roster of, of the UFO people. But apparently this documentary is going to change everything like that. This is they're going to show finally 4K high definition videos, photographs, like the best stuff you've ever seen. Most convincing um, UFO and UAP footage ever. That's what he's saying. He said on this podcast, you know, this is going to change the game. To your point, we are going to see a lot of changes in this area over the next few years. So. Oh. Uh, perhaps we'll have you back on and we can discuss some of them. You know, Ryan, I, I hope we do. And I hope I get invited back. I think, you know, there's some, I think there's some stuff coming out, you know, there's the documentary that I know you're a part of that's going to be coming out that I think is going to be game changing. Um, there's been a lot of stuff said, but this, I think this is going to have the right amount of people. I'm not saying who it is or when it is, but there is something being put together that I think, you know, hopefully it will come out. And it'll be, you know, that one thing that pushes it over that says, all right, we can't, that the cat is definitely out of the bag because I think it, there's going to be some, some interesting information that comes out in it. So yeah. it'll be, it'll be good. I think it's, Stay it's an tuned. exciting times. <laughs> <laughs> we don't support the X-File <laughs> themes here at all. So, <laughs> all right, Dave, thanks That's so Twilight much. Zone. Yeah, thanks, dude. It's, it's been great. Great seeing you. Um, and it's coming out, you know, this year. So I don't know. That's yeah. cool. There's nothing on this online. I try to search for this online. David Fravor documentary, right? There's nothing. There's nothing out there about this. So, yeah. Uh, so I'll put a link to the YouTube video on the merge podcast.
podcast and at the very end of the episode basically when they're getting when they're saying their goodbyes that's when david fravor brings it up and apparently ryan graves is in too it's kind of hush hush i don't think david fravor was supposed to bring it up because i don't think they're done with it yet so he was on he was on joe involved. rogan as well right david fravor oh yeah absolutely he's been on you name the show he's been on it to talk about that experience i mean the tic tac thing was the biggest i don't know that's the biggest ufo story that there is outside of roswell um is is that one because he's a wit direct eyewitness and you know it was a huge uh, but yeah that's what he said i mean they did the documentary that that's true that that but who's producing and directing i don't know some people speculated it could be the new james fox documentary i don't think that's the case um this could be the thing luis elizondo has been working out right the top secret right. thing the the i don't know what that is to this day you know so um but this documentary is coming out it 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 for sure has david fravor and uh ryan graves in it that's because he mentioned that um but who else is in it what they said i don't know that's just what they said on the podcast so check it out let me know what you think um and again until we see it it's hard to judge how good it's going to be right like what does that mean they say that about every documentary coming out um it's going to be the one yeah this yeah is the yeah. Thing, like you know because they want to create buzz yeah <laughs> yeah yeah they want to create buzz um and and to be fair, they have been getting better you know they have been getting more activating and uh, whether or not you believe in the subject the film is still worth watching right Does yeah yeah no, I agree. you know what i mean so like moment of contact james fox whether or not you believe aliens are real enough it's a great documentary it takes you on this journey with the story and it's captivating and thrilling and suspenseful and so i think they're you know as long as they keep making the films like that people will keep watching and, and stay interested um in the topic whether or not you provide proof or not uh, clearly people do not care in this community if, if you provide proof or not that, that clearly is not, not a, a bar some people need it other people do not. again they've had their own experience so what proof can you give them that would deny nothing right? they've made up their minds so we're we're beyond proof and uh evidence and um you know we're at just convincing you of something you already believe also the thing with david fravor is i mean i looked him up on imdb and he has done a lot of stuff already media work all sorts of things right um yeah. documentaries cnn tonight 60 minutes you know yeah uh, sorts of fox stuff. news you name it yeah, so you always wonder um <laughs> Why did he not spill, you know, the, the ultimate final truth there? You know, <laughs> why does he wait until 2023 until he spills it, right? So, <laughs> and this new exactly. Document. I mean, I, <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. What, what, I mean, <laughs> exactly. I don't. So, know. Yes. I guess we have to yes. wait. I mean, I mean, what I do. I mean, obviously, I understand that the sort of the whole. I guess the atmosphere is different now right the climate sort of so to speak yeah. because the they have this this uh, investigation um at, at congress right which they take this thing very seriously so i mean i can see why people get encouraged to speak about it in public because before it might have been ridiculed you know um but now it has been sort of taken on a different it has been taking a different turn and um it has been legitimized you know to a great to, to a great extent i think these um um, these accounts of people ha having sightings and and seeing seeing ufos so um i mean so that would make sense to me you know so if you said well before i didn't want to really share everything because you know you would not believe me anyway but now you might so that makes sense right i mean we, yeah. we saw that That's talked about point. that That's yeah point. that that rancher the the other night right when we talked about his son now maybe believing what his, his dad said yeah. right and, and assuming that yeah. so that is definitely one factor sure no no that's um that's definitely a good point for sure. Um, yeah. I, I don't know if David Fravor is releasing any new information about his story in this documentary. Um, that I don't know. He didn't, they didn't talk about that. Um, so he could be telling the same old story. He could be there for other reasons like, hey, look at this for us. Right. Maybe he's there as I don't know what his role in the documentary is. Um, if he is saying some new evidence 
or some new things, new details. Uh, apparently, the just the big thing about this documentary is that they're going to be showing uh, the the best, most high quality video and photos of UFOs ever put on a documentary. You know, ever put right. out in the, into the public domain. Which that to me is is the most exciting part just on a personal level, like that will not convince me of anything. Um, again, I, I need to literally meet an alien face to face to believe it at this point. I, I, I gotta like, I gotta have like, I got a video is just not gonna at all. I don't care how good it looks. It, it, I just, I don't, I, I need to, I need something legit, uh, but it's fascinating to look at, you yeah. know, they show something, you know, exciting. Yeah, right. maybe we'll get David Frave on this show at some point if if you manage, you know. Um, or, or if anyone who's sure. listening and watching now, if they yeah. have any suggestions for guests, you know, let us know. I mean, if you know yeah. someone interesting, or if you think you're an interesting guest because you had a new UFO sighting, um, I mean, by all means, yeah. you know, we would love for you to share your story here, right? So, um, you know, let us know in the comments or write to us the de- all the details on YouTube. Um, that would be really great, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and you said it last time, Sebastian, too, if you've had a experience or sighting and you think it's, you know, exciting to talk about, come, you know, hit us up, mention it. If we think it's um, worthy, we'll we'll bring you on the podcast and let you tell your story. Um, because, look, we're, we are open here. We're, we're just open. We're just want, we're just asking questions. We're just curious. Um, we just want to know what's happening. I mean, it's just fascinating, um, right? So, yeah, absolutely. I think um, trying to think. Um, that's all the news that that I have, Sebastian. I don't know if I have any. I'm trying to think what else. I thought there was maybe one other thing, but no, that's it. That's the big David Grush testifying at the end of the month with Luis Elizondo. That new documentary. But mainly this David Grush thing, this testimony that's happening at the end of this month. I mean, clearly that's huge, right? So that that's what we're going to be focused on for next week. Hopefully, maybe we'll have some more details um, by next week. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. But please go check out the new episode of Vetted. I worked really hard on it, um, and it's great. It's again, it's got the update for David Grush. I go into how to pronounce the word nuclear, nuclear, excuse me, nuclear. Apparently there's a bazillion ways to pronounce this word. Find out about that um, and how that was used against David Grush um, as well. So, yeah, a lot, lot of great stuff in the episode. It's doing gangbusters right now on YouTube. So please go check it out. And yeah, yeah let us know. Did you, hear about, uh, did you hear about that congressman? What's his name? Tim, Tim Burchett. Oh, how do you pronounce it? Yeah, that's it. What what about him? Yeah, I know about him. He's looking into UFOs too. He's having a, his own hearing as well. Yeah, there wasn't the last, there was only stuff released in, in the media in the last two or three days, including today, where he said they fly underwater and defy physics for 125 years, right? And he has been shown in those secret meetings, he has been shown classified evidence that the public, you know, has no access to. And um Right. You know, so um maybe interesting to see. He says, Did you hear the comment where he said um they could turn us into charcoal, <laughs> the aliens? Yes, he said um if the technology they're claiming they have is true, then they could turn us into charcoal. Right. So yeah, that that's uh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, he's an interesting he take everything he says with a grain of salt. He's an interesting guy. He says a lot of wacky things. So it doesn't surprise me that he's jumping on to the UFO thing. Um, so just be wary of that. Senator Rubio is someone that would be oh, yeah, interested yeah, yeah. in their he, comments. He's also in the um, same. I know. I know. He's, yeah, he's yeah, saying he's this also. stuff. I put him in the vetted episode. So again, check that out. Um, I bring that up. Marco Rubio. I show some of his comments and, and the impact of what he's saying. Uh, he's the one I'm most excited about that's getting involved uh, from a government standpoint. Um, he just wants to look into this. And he said the last two years, they've had people testifying to them privately and saying the same stuff that David Grush has been saying. 
Yeah. You know, like this is not new to him. This is all. Yep. Been hearing this. And that's, what's concerning to him. It's like, man, how many more people are going to with the high level of clearance are going to come out and say what David Grush is saying before we go, okay, what's going on. Right. That's what Marco Rubio is saying. Like how many more people have to come forward with the highest levels of clearance in our government? How many more have to come to us and say, hey, there's something going on before we do something about it? And I got to yeah. agree with that. I, I got to agree with that. Yeah. What, what, again, it's either that we do have crashed UFOs and alien bodies or our government is so screwed up, it makes people believe that. You know, it, 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 th- what is happening inside our government that would make these super, you know, intelligent, credible people think we have this insane conspiracy going on. There, there's clearly something wrong in our government one way or the other. Either we have the, right, we've been lying to us or holy shit, there's just some crazy shit going on inside our government. And, you know, we're, we're putting the craziest people at the highest levels. That, that's also concerning, right? So all of this is concerning. Yeah, but there's no part of it, right? Like we we do need to find out what what is yeah. happening. Oh yeah, I mean definitely they will never be able to bury it now, right? After what happened now in Washington, uh, I mean this one they will never be able to put out that fire, yeah. right? I mean that's going to burn yeah. until all eternity, right? <laughs> so yeah. I mean yeah. I'm not yeah, sure absolutely. how they. I mean I mean there's no off ramp here, right? I mean there's yeah. only. Now. <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah. They can only, you know, I mean, they, they have to show the goods now, I guess, right? So sooner or later, anyway, right? This is not going to quiet down anytime soon, yeah. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, guys, so so that's it. Please, um, you know, every Monday, join us for the podcast where we just go over the UFO news. Again, Amy will be back with us next week. Hope she feels better. And um, again, the new episode of Vetted, is out so click the link go check it out now that's just the second part to our our final part to the interview with nick pope david grush update you see his eyes close while he's saying the sense of service you're not being paid for this interview no i'm not why are you doing this it's a sense of service you know and this closed eye talking is most common in western countries when somebody's patting themselves on a back in like a pretentious manner while they're trying to make it look humble and the example is when you ask your neighbor why they bought some solar panels for their house or an electric car and they go oh well you know it's good for the environment you see the same exact behavior we have spacecraft from another species we do yeah how many quite a number you're kidding no what do I mean quite a number what more than 10 but uh, less than five i mean a hundred or more i mean quite a number I mean, that could be anything. Why would somebody who is so clear and articulate just give us quite a number? So no no numbers there. Listen, I, I'm already finding him sl- more than slightly annoying, and it's going to get worse. It's fantastic. And next week it'll be, or the next one will be Avi Loeb. So our interview with Avi Loeb will be diving deep into all of that. Uh, and this was that this was recorded that episode before he found these um before he found you know because before he was kind of um leaving for his expedition right he, he's talking about that he's going to go correct so yeah correct. Exactly. yeah it, you know, and obviously interview, you know yeah. it, it see it in the light watch it in the light what has happened now right it's really revealing i mean it's correct. really interesting correct yeah i mean he literally said i'm gonna go and do it and then he did it he put his money, that guy puts his money where his mouth is, man. And I, that's why Avi Loeb, like you said to Sebastian, he is like, he's one of the people I look up to in this because he's just, he wants the truth. He's a scientist. He, he's trying to go after the facts and um, he's doing actual science. He's bringing back actual proof and evidence, whether or not you want to, he's got something. You know, he shows something. He's he's going out into the field. He's doing something. He's putting cameras out. He's he brought hundreds of people, some of the smartest minds in the world, together to look at this. He created this project, right? He wasn't just like, I mean, yes, like, yeah. So the, the interview with Avi is is super exciting. I can't wait to share that. That's probably going to be a two parter um, as well. And yeah, uh, I'm. I'm I can't wait to share uh, some of that stuff that he's got going on and what he's doing. So, 
yeah, good episode. And then the Mick West one after that, after Avi. So uh, there's a preview of the Mick West interview in this new episode uh, that's out. So anyway, yeah. Um, all right, guys. Yeah, that's it for me. Um, that's it. That's the news. Again, David Grush testifying into the month. A uh, new documentary coming out it says David Fraber. Luis, Luis Salazando's got some big news dropping. So we'll see what's happening. We'll keep you updated. And, you know, that's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting. Leave us your comments. We read them all. A lot of people are in the UFO community have said, is it any coincidence that we developed and and then used in anger the bomb in 1945? Yeah. And then two years later, we had Kenneth Arnold, Flying Saucers, and then Roswell, and, and the birth of the modern phenomenon. Did this put us on the map? We'll also discuss what UFO disclosure actually means and how it could impact society. You know, what will be the impact on politics, religion, science, sure. technology, the economy? Yeah. Because make no, no mistake about it, every aspect of, of society will be impacted in, in a profound way, I'm sure. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Follow us on Twitter at Vetted Podcast. This is Vetted.